Hey there, science enthusiasts. Welcome back to another episode of Two Guys Talking Science and Autism. My name is GW and I'm here with our resident science guy, Dean, and we are your guide to everything mind-blowing and brain-bending. Today, we're diving into personalized healthcare for autism. So Dean, what is personalized healthcare for autism? Very good question. And it goes back to our idea that if you met one person with autism, you've met one person with autism. So if you think about it, like I wear glasses. Um, if you needed glasses, you wouldn't be wearing mine. You'd be given a prescription that's for you. That's a type of personalized healthcare. As we've looked at autism, all the co-occurring conditions things that may be related to depression, anxiety. Um, you think about epilepsy, you think about issues of GI, sleep. Those all make up a different composition for each person. So if I was going to treat you, I wouldn't treat a person who doesn't have some of these conditions the same way I treat somebody that does. So personalized um, health care is really kind of meet you where you are. What are the things that are most important to you? And what are the things that we can kind of unearth, find out about you that should be treated? Now, I did occupational therapy and music therapy from third through sixth grade. Would those be considered personalized healthcare? Absolutely. Meeting where you are. Everybody may have diff different um, problems with a uh, language. There are some you know, people that are nonverbal. The question is, how do you work with those individuals? That's a personalized health care piece. So again, it's getting to know you better, meeting where you are, and then enhancing those things that um, can give you a better quality of life. Right. We both want to know your strengths as your weaknesses, and that's where personalized health care can come in. What, could you compare like the, the traditional approaches of treating autism to more personalized health care? It's a very good question. I think one of the problems we have in the autism field is that there are very few treatments or support you know, systems in there. In other words, what can we do for these individuals? They're not necessarily there at this point. If you think about FDA approved medications, that's there are only two and they're actually more for more challenging behaviors. In terms of these other areas, more towards the um, if we think about the co-occurring conditions, those are ones where we have more traditional medicines. But here's an example about personalized medicine, is the thing is, is that in the general public, we say that somebody responds to a particular medication, and that's, it's, it's kind of on a population basis. But we all know that there's some people that are very sensitive to that, and some people that it works very little for those people. A lot of medications have not been really tested in the autism population. Those are things that we need to craft that personalized medicine. Is this actually going to be effective in terms of their particular issue, or is it going to uh, enhance it in some ways? Those are things that we don't always know from the autism community. So Dean, what are the specific challenges in, within personalized health care? I think there's, um, as we know, communication is one of the aspects of uh, autism, sometimes relating to others, knowing about um, particular cues. Um, everybody's different. Some people pick up very well on that, some people do not. So again, that's where you could meet the person to support them in some ways, that personalized care related to their communications. It could be related to, we want food sensitivities. That's an issue for individuals and for that reason, understanding that is personalizing for that person about whether they would avoid things or there are things that they, we could help them with. I think, you know, restrictive and repetitive behaviors, which again, thinking about repetitive behaviors and thinking about a routine basis is actually very good many things. We think about that from a nutrition point of view. We think about that from an exercise point of view. But it's a question of whether some of that routine basis really interferes with somebody from the point of view that if you go outside that routine, is that kind of disastrous for that person? Does it really disturb them in some ways? Understanding, that's another part of personalized healthcare, is understanding those pieces. And when you put that all together for an individual, you're gonna actually make a happier and healthier life by understanding that and putting it together. 
Now that all sounds great and it sounds like there can be a lot of progress that can be done with all of that, what you just said, but when it comes to low income communities in which communities that can't afford that kind of health care, what do you think the solution is? If we talk about nutrition or we think about exercise and things, those can be din done in a fairly low income area. It's how to get kids out to play mm -hmm. is another way. You should get adults to play. Right. Uh, that's really an important part, and that's where they're getting that exercise. I think that's one piece. I think the other thing is, again, guiding them with information that they can use. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things I talked about, Autism Speaks has a resource, resource guide. Mm -hmm. Where could you find resources in your community that might even be free that can help you along that journey? That could be both for the person with autism or a caregiver. Right. They also need support in their own way. So I think, yes, you're exactly right. How do you get really to the point where communities can all have access to this? Well, thanks guys for watching this episode of Two Guys Talking Science and Autism. As always, tune in next time for our next episode. And thanks again, Dean, for uh, being on with me and talking about very important topics of the autism community. Thank you. I love the dialogue that we have and we should continue that. Uh -huh.